BGMC. The biblical truth lives here. scriptures foretold of the anointed one, Yeshua HaMashiach. The Messiah Yeshua came to call the people back to the truth of His word and to follow that righteous path. Yeshua then called Jewish men to be His disciples, and after His death and resurrection, those Jewish men told the world about the Jewish Messiah. Now, after 2,000 years, Beth Goyim Messianic Congregation has that same calling of those Jewish men telling all people, both Jew and Gentile, about the proper ancient path, teaching the Route 66 King's Highway from Genesis through to Revelation, and how you need and can get back to the proper roots of the faith and a closer walk with God. Now, let's hear the message. Let's go get a blessing. Turn to the book of Numbers. Numbers chapter 5. Numbers chapter 5. Uh, this is message E260. E260. It is called the covering. The covering. E260. We're going to be starting in the book of Bamidwar, Numbers 518. This past Shabbat, we had a very interesting discussion in our afternoon Road to Emmaus class. And what the Lord impressed upon me was um, really something very interesting. And what I think people are not understanding are certain concepts that are scriptural because they're coming from, from Christian backgrounds or coming from pagan backgrounds. Like when you first start really walking with the Lord, See, so well, as a Christian, I don't believe you're really walking with the Lord. You're walking with a, a form of the Lord, but you're not really, you're, for some people it might be uh, transforming from the pagan life that they were, but if you, know, you, you compared their lives to, to uh, Yeshua's lives or any of the disciples, the Talmudim, you, you would not recognize the, the, the scriptures in their life. So what we're going to be looking at tonight is the covering. What is a biblical covering? Numbers 5, verse 18. This is what started this whole meditation this week for this particular message. The Shabbat message will be drastically different than this one. Numbers 5, verse 18. Numbers 5, verse 18. The Kohen will place a woman before Jehovah. Unbind a woman's hair and put a grain put a grain offering for remember, remembering in her hands, the grain offering for jealousy. Well, the Cohen has in his hand the water of embitterment and cursing. Amen? So what we're starting out with is what was the impetus behind our afternoon road to Emmaus. Now, if you're online with us, you can uh, join us after our Shabbat message and um, uh, we can talk to you and you can, we don't stream it, we use WebEx so that we can be interacted with those that want to be a part of it. But we started with, um, we had a couple of people that didn't really understand what the concept of why the woman's hair is unbound, that it's covered. See, there are certain things that are very specific. This, this law is very different. It's not very different. It's different in the sense that it's, it's saying things opposite. It says that every woman who is married, if the husband is jealous about his wife, what it says is that he brings her to the Kohen, and the Kohen in the tabernacle unbinds her hair. That means he uncovers it because she's showing by having her head covered is that she belongs to somebody. She belongs that she's somebody's property. She is married. What the, the basis really is, is, is that she is married. So the husband thinks that his wife is, is um, having an affair on him, but he has no proof. And he's going to put it in God's hands. Okay, He's going to put it in God's hands. And he's going to bring it to the Cohen, bring her to the Cohen, his property. 
that is covered with his covering, meaning her hair is covered in fullness, okay? And, and through the scriptures, what we're going to do in this era Shabbat message, E260, the covering, what we're going to look at are all the scriptures that talk about covering, what a covering means, what it is meant to do, what the covering actually is all about, why it is that if the husband is thinking that his wife is having an affair, why doesn't he strip her naked in front of everybody? But what he's doing is stripping off her head because for most people, love making love or sexual activity has more to do with one's mind than it has to do with one's body, okay? So here, what we're going to explore, and then we're gonna come back to this scripture that we started out with. We're going to explore coverings. What is a biblical covering, okay? Now, let's turn now to Numbers 15, verses 37 through 40. Numbers, Bamidbar 15 now, verse 37 through 40, okay? We're going to be talking about the Talit, okay? Because the Talit is where you're going to find the seed seed, okay? Numbers 15, verses 37 through 40. Bamidbar 15, verse 37 through 40. Jehovah said to Moshe, speak to the sons of Israel, instructing them to make through all their generations seat seats on the corners of their garments, and to put with the seat seat on each corner a blue thread. It is to be a seat seat, seat, seat for you to look at, and thereby remember all of Jehovah's mitzvot and obey them so that you won't go around whenever you're, wherever your own heart and eyes lead you to prostitute yourselves. But it will help you remember and obey all my mitzvot and be holy for your Elohim. Amen? So here we're talking about the tzitziot. The tzitziot are on a special garment that has four corners. Now, in the time that this was written, everybody wore dresses, as we would know them today as dresses. Okay, well, what would be a dress? Well, there was only one grouping of people that wore pants, and we see that later on with the Kohanim. Um, they had specifically made pants, but generally, everybody was wearing a round garment. So the Sitio had to be placed on a garment such as what you're seeing here. And there are many scriptures we can go into just speak about that, and there's a study on our website about the talit, okay? Who should wear a talit? We go, I go through all the, 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 the Greek and the, the, the Hebrew, the crespidon, and all that, the wings and everything. But what we're focusing here on tonight is the covering. Now the man is to put this covering around his body. He is to be surrounded, because if you have four corners, that means two are in front, two are in the back. You know, a corner means you are surrounded. The talit is then placed on the man, and during prayer, most men, and you would see this is why this is called the temple, is that you cover your head in prayer as to not be looking up about anything, but to commune with God. So here the tzitziot are wrapped around the man's body. He's encompassing his life fully. He's encompassing his life fully. He's encompassing his life fully, if you're taking notes, that's why I'm saying it three times, with the commands of God, okay? Now look at verse 39. It's to be tzitzit for you to look at and thereby remember all of Jehovah's mitzvot and obey them so that you won't go around wherever your own heart and eyes lead you to prostitute yourself. Now, the woman who's thinking, well, well, he's not fully covered. I can see his hands. I can see his body. Okay, well, just sit back a minute and listen to the whole message because it's going to be, when, we, when you look at all the scriptures, you're going to see very plainly that it is a full covering. Now, we're going back to the seat seat. 
it's for him to look at. So it's on the four corners. That means it's going to be a garment that's surrounding him. That's going to be a garment that's going to at least be on his shoulders around his neck. Okay, where it's going to be surrounding his heart. It's going to be surrounding his head. It's going to be surrounding his body so that he is encompassing the four corners, meaning that he's looking this way, he sees the tzitzi. He's looking this way, he sees the tzitzi. Looking this way, he sees the tzitzi. He's looking in all directions, and he's surrounded, he's covered fully by the, the commandments of the Lord. And, you know, even if you look at this as in a compass, north, south, east, west, these are the primary directions, okay? But in between, you have the north, east, you know, the southwest, things like that. But it still encompasses the directions. So here, he's covered fully in all the commandments. So here, the woman who is thought to be having an adulterous affair, she has her hair uncovered because she doesn't have some of the hair sticking out. So here, okay, no, no. Just keep listening because some things take a little bit longer. Set up, don't eat the pig. Okay, that's real simple. But there, when you go to look at some of the other animals that we don't eat, you gotta, well, does that? You gotta think about it, okay? So this one you have to think about. And as we get through this message over this one hour period, that's what these Arab Shabbat messages are gonna be. We're gonna, I'm gonna try to keep them at one hour, okay? To give you some real food for thought for Arab Shabbat. And the reason we're doing it is because we were doing a broadcast to the Philippines and I felt it necessary because we've we've departed ways with that particular organization and I felt it the Lord impressed upon me that we should cover the world because in the Philippines in the Far East uh, they're, they're 12 hours different than we are here in New York so I was just like well we should cover we should cover the world with the Word of God and then also do an English only message. Because sometimes I understand that it is hard to have the two languages. Okay, you have to get used to it. Okay, so here the four corners, we wanna cover the four corners. We wanna cover in full the world at large. We wanna cover the north, the south, the east, and the west, and we want it to be live. So by doing it 11 o'clock New York time, I believe it's 12 o'clock in the Philippines. I believe that we're uh, or I think we're on the same time then when we change the clocks it'll be 13 hours okay so, but we want to cover the world just as the four corners of the of the talit has a seat seat on it okay it is a mantle that is covering the man the mantle that is reminding the man what's he reminding the man of why is he fully covered in the commandments of God okay why is he fully covered because he doesn't want to step outside of the commandments. The other thing about a tali, during a, a Hebrew wedding, and we have a whole study on the wedding, the Hebrew wedding, the Messianic Hebrew weddings. During a, a Hebrew wedding, the bride and groom come underneath the tali, okay? Underneath the tali. Well, why do they come underneath the tali? Why do they, do they stand at minimum the bride and groom? Now, if you have families that are followers of the commandments of God, that are Sabbath keepers, that follow the Torah, that believe in Yeshua, they are also the mother and father, if they're alive, they're, they're supposed to come under the talit with the bride and groom. Okay? The reason being is that the two families are coming together fully under God's commandments. Okay, the tali is representative of God's commandment. We just read that because what's at the end? The tzitzio. You come under the commandments, the covering of God's commandments fully. And if you stay fully in God's commandments, you then will get God's blessings. Once you step out from underneath the commandments, you step out from the covering of God's blessing, and then you get chastisement you get sin the sin then leads to the adultery this is why in numbers 518 the woman was brought because her husband is suspecting and he doesn't have proof yet but sometimes the spirit speaks to you okay so he's allowing the lord to say okay i'm going to bring my wife uh and let you deal with it because if she's if she's sinning if she's had an adulterous affair she's going to drink the water of embitterment 
She's going to have her head uncovered because that's the removal of her husband's covering, the removal of her husband's covering, the removal of her husband's covering because the man is the covering of the family. We're going to get to that scripture in a minute. Okay? The covering, you're removing yourself from that covering to walk in the sin. The same goes for the talit. The talit is over the wedding. It is fully where the bride and groom at minimum and the families, if they're believers, they come under, fully cover, come under the tali, saying, I want to be covered with God's commandments because I know that God's commandments are good. I know that by following these commandments, I will be blessed. But by stepping out from these commandments, then you allow the devil to do his job. Had Chava in the Garden of Eden, the Garden of Eden, had Eve in the Garden of Eden, the Garden of Eden, had she just listened to the commandment of her husband and stayed under his covering, because he passed on the word of God to his wife, as long as she stayed under the covering and didn't believe what Hasatan, the adversary, the evil one, said to her, and she just said, no, you know, she would have just said, I believe what my husband said, that the Father in heaven told us, told him, and then he told me, don't eat the fruit, then everything would be fine and we wouldn't even be talking about this. But since she allowed herself to come uncovered by her husband and listen to something evil over what her husband, her covering, had told her, because the Father had told him, he then gave it to his wife, here, we can eat anything we want, just don't eat from that tree. You can touch that tree, you can look at the tree, but you can't eat from that tree. That was all the commandment that was said. Okay, we know that Jehovah said that to Adam. But she stepped out from the covering, thus allowing sin to come in. So here in Numbers 5.18, if the woman's you know, covering 70% of her hair, what good is it? Then just let it fly all together because you're, you're disrespecting your husband. But be that as it may, let's take a look at another scripture. Let's take a detailed look in this message tonight, message E, 260. We're going to look at a detailed covering. What is a biblical covering and what does it mean for each and every person? Okay, let's turn to Numbers, Bamidbar 30 now. Numbers 30, verse 1 through 7. Numbers 30, verse 1 through 7. Numbers 30, verse 1 through 7. We're now going to take the covering a little further. How, what is this biblical covering? Because, you know, some people want to say, well, you, I can see your arms, so why can't I have some of my hair uncovered? Let's take a look at that. We're going to look at the whole thing and understand what and why a woman's hair needs to be covered. What is a biblical covering? So we've already explored being under the talit for your marriage is saying, I want the full blessings of God and I'm agreeing to the full blessings. That's why I'm standing fully underneath the talit. Now, Numbers 30, verse 1 through 7. Numbers 30, verses 1 through 7. Then Moshe spoke to the heads of the tribes of the people of Israel. He said, here is what Jehovah has ordered. When a man makes a vow to Jehovah and formally obligates himself by swearing an oath, he is not to break his word, but to, is to do everything he said he would do. When a woman makes a vow to Jehovah, formally obligating herself, while she is a minor living in her father's house, then if her father has heard what she vowed or obligated herself to do and hold his peace, then all her vows remain binding. Every obligation she has bound herself to will stand. But if on the day, the day her father hears it, he expresses his disapproval, then none of her vows or obligations she has bound herself to will stand. And Jehovah will forgive her because her father expressed his disapproval. If having made vows or rashly committed herself to an obligation, she gets married and her husband hears but holds his peace with her on the day he learns of it, then her vow and obligation she has bound herself will stand. Amen? 
So let's take a first look at the first part of this. We're talking about how does a biblical covering work? How does a biblical covering work? Okay. Now we go back to verse 3. We see when a woman makes a vow to Jehovah, formally obligating herself while she's in, while she is a minor living in her father's house. Amen? So the father is the covering. Now this concept is a little easier to understand, but we're going to take it further. So we're going to take her step by step. We started in Numbers 5.18. The woman's hair is totally bound. It is totally covered. The man, then, then we went to Numbers 15, but Midbar 15. The man wears a talit. He's surrounded. He's covered by God's laws. But, you know, people are saying, well, you know, um, I can still see him, but I'm covered by the, God, by the Lord's word. Okay? Now, let's take it further into the biblical covering. Now, we looked at verse 3. A woman or a girl makes a vow in her father's house, and the father hears of it. He is the covering. He is the head of the house. He is the covering of the house. The mother is not the covering of the house. The brother is not the covering of the house unless the father is dead. But the covering of the house is the father. So if the father decides to make the vow void, he is the covering of the house. He is the biblical covering. So every decision that the girl makes if the father doesn't like it because he is fully covering the home because he is responsible to God the order of the covering goes God the head of the house is the man then goes the mother or the oldest brother okay if the brother is not a man if he is not 20 he's not a man it would be an uncle this is the order, the covering. Now, once you understand the covering, then you can understand the woman's hair being fully covered because she is under the authority of her husband. Well, let's prove that. Okay? Now, going down to verse 7, Numbers 30, verse 7, Numbers 30, verse 7, and her husband hears but holds his peace with her on the day he learns of it, then her vows and obligation she has bound herself to will stand. Okay, so you, who gets to stop the vow? It is the husband. He can hear of his wife's vow and go, I don't like what I hear because I'm the covering. I'm the full covering over this home. Then I am the one who has the obligation to say that is a bad vow or a good vow because I am obligated to the father, okay, the son, then me, then the woman. This is what we call a biblical covering. So here, the husband brings the wife. He thinks she's having an affair. He's not sure. He's going to put it before the Lord because the Lord is his covering, okay? So the woman, during her normal days, her head is fully covered because the man is fully the covering over the home. It doesn't say here in the vow section of Bamidbar 30 that the wife can stop the husband's vows. It is only the husband that can stop the wife's vows. So in the understanding of a biblical covering, the order is this order. God... Yeshua the son, the man of the house who has married his wife under the tali, and if you don't believe you got to get married under a tali, there's a, I think it's a 30 or 40 hour study on the biblical marriage on our website. Go to mess messianicstudent.org. Okay, and I go through the whole tali and the whole covering and stuff like that. But now we're going further with this. We're talking about a biblical covering and why it is necessary for the wife to show that she is a servant to her husband. I know in our Western culture, and especially in the Latin women culture, 
they can't understand this because I'm not, no, I'm not a servant to anybody. And also, you know, uh, you tell that to an African American person, oh, no, 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 I ain't no servant to nobody. Uh -uh, uh -uh. We're talking the Bible. Uh -uh, no, sir, I ain't. Ta no, you ta I am nobody's property. Well, I'm property. I'm a slave to God. Okay? And I am happy to be a slave to God. Okay? And as Jews, we don't like it either. We were in slavery a lot longer than anybody else. Okay? So here, when you come under God's covering and God's order, then you are happy because God said, I will bless you if you follow my order. But if you step out from my order, if you're not following in my commandments, then you're not fully under my covering, then you're with my adversary, Satan, and I'm going to give you to Satan. So here once again in verse 7, and her husband hears, but holds his peace with her on the day he learns of it, then her vow and obligation she has bound herself to will stand. The husband has the ability to say, no, I don't want my wife doing that. Why? Because one, biblically, the wife is the property of the man. Okay? In a marriage, it should be together. They are friends. And remember, Chava was pulled from the side, his rib, as to be a helpmate, so that she wasn't pulled from his foot so that he would step on her. She wasn't pulled from his head that she would be over him. She was pulled from his side. But when it comes down to biblical order, the full covering of the home is not the, the woman or the wife, okay? which the wife would be a woman. We don't believe in that, that transgender stupidity, garbage, crap, okay? The pit of hell, Satan stuff, okay? One man, one woman, okay? The husband is the full covering of the home. Now, if you still don't understand it, let's go a little further, because I think some people may not be understanding it. Let's see if we can fully understand the cover. Now this next scripture is really going to bring it home. Because if there wasn't a full covering, there was going to be a serious problem. All right? Now, get ready. We're going to fully understand what a biblical covering is and why the woman's hair has to be fully covered. Now we're going to go back, backwards now, to the book of Bereshit, Genesis chapter 6. Bereshit, Genesis chapter 6. Bereshit chapter 6. We're, now, we're looking at the biblical covering. What does a covering mean? We're going to look now at Bereshit, Genesis chapter 6, verse 13 and 14. Verse 13 and 14. Okay? We're going to look at that. Those, um, those verses. And then we're going to really understand what why the woman's hair in Numbers 5, 18 has to be fully covered. Elohim said to Noah, the end of all living beings has come before me. For because of them the earth is filled with violence. I will destroy them along with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. You are to make the ark with rooms and cover it with pitch both outside and inside. Amen? The key is verse 14. Let's reread verse 14 again. Okay, let's reread verse 14. Maybe you didn't get it. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. You are to make the ark with rooms and cover it with pitch both outside and inside. Amen? Now, we all know the account of Noah. Okay, what did God do? All evil had come on around the earth. It was the earth was fully covered except for one person with total evil. So God said, I'm going to destroy the earth because it's fully covered with evil. I'm done with you people. Okay? But he found one righteous person, and he tells his one righteous person to take himself and his three sons, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. No, 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 wrong people. Shem, Ham, and Yafet. Okay? He takes a, a scene if you're paying attention. Okay? Are you awake? It's only 11.30, it's early. Okay? So here, he tells them to make an ark, and he tells them to cover it with pitch, both outside and inside. 
Now, let's just take a, a, a look at this. Let's take a look at the architecture, okay? Now, he builds this ark, and it's got one door and one window, okay? Now, mind the smell that was going to kill people, I guess, you know, because remember, there's all those animals in it, and animals, when they, <laughs> it's going to stink, okay? But there was one window that was 18 inches big up at the top, but it was covered. Now, let's take a look at that covering. What if Noach didn't cover the whole roof with pitch both inside and outside? What would happen if it began to leak? Say, say Noach covered 90 nine percent of the ark it rained day and night torrential rains for 40 days and 40 nights one percent just one percent was uncovered what was going to happen with all that water where were you going to put put it how were you going to remove it you couldn't you couldn't open the door because who shut the door on the ark? It was God himself. So if you were to open that door, what was going to happen to you? You were going to drown. So here, let's take a, f now let's slow down. You're 99% covered with the pitch. 1% of your roof is open. 1% of your roof is leaking. What's going to happen over 40 days of constant rain? What's going to happen to that ark? It's going to sink nice and slow. So you're going to drown nice and slow because why? You didn't want to be covered with the word of God. God said here in verse 14, Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. You are to make the ark with rooms and cover it with pitch both outside and inside. So now let's take that understanding of obedience or outright disobedience, outright rebellion. If a woman who is married wants to have her hair uncovered, well, she wants to cover 60% of it or 70% of it, what do you think is going to happen? If you had 70% of your roof covered, interesting, don't you think? I was like, that was so cool, Lord. Okay? 70% of your hair is covered. So you now let's think of this as the ark. You got 30% of your hair that's uncovered. How long do you think that ark is going to float with 40 days and 40 nights of torrential rain, enough to flood all the world to cover even Mount Ararat, the highest mountain in the world? And let me tell you, I, I flew over to Himalayas. They were high. I walked in the Himalayas, and let me tell you, I was sucking wind. Okay? All right? they, those things are high. Now, imagine all that water covering the earth. How much water was coming down? So you, you cover the, the, the ark 70%. Well, that was good enough. You know, I, I think, you know, that's good enough. But you're, you're coming out from underneath the covering of God. You're coming out from the, the word of God. So here you bring it back to Numbers 5.18. What happens then? Well, you know, uh, she, her hair was just partially covered. So why did he have to uncover it at all? The man, oh, well, he's only got the talit. He's covered on all four corners with the word of God. You have to understand what the covering is. Should you have half of your breasts exposed? Then why not have them all exposed? Okay? It's that simple. Now, Noah, the Lord said in verse 14, cover it, both pitch both outside and inside. Well, let's just say I did the outside. Why did God say to cover the inside? It's going to be a double insulation. So you missed a little part. It's still not going to get in. Okay? So you're covering the head 
fully because you're understanding the concept of a covering. That's why the bride and groom come under the talit fully. Now, if you have parents that are alive and they follow Torah, then they come under the covering also because they want to help the couple because they have years of marriage and years of wisdom and both families come under that's when my son got married I was under the chuppah my wife was there and my, uh, my uh, daughter-in-law's mother was there okay we all came under the chuppah because we all believe in Torah we all believe in God we all believe in his son Yeshua we all want to help them survive in their marriage but in the laws of God okay so here you take this covering, this biblical covering, to the ark, the Noah's ark, okay? Let's just say it was 99% covered. What's going to happen to that covering after 40 days and 40 nights of a torrential rain enough to cover the highest mountains on the world? God wants you fully covered. He wants to cover you fully with his blessings. He wants to cover you fully with his hand. He wants to cover you fully so that you're protected. And the wife is supposed to be covered by her husband, full protection. She's showing her allegiance to her husband. She's putting herself under his covering. That is why she has her hair fully covered. Let's go to Genesis 8. Genesis 8, verse 1, 2, 3. You learning anything tonight on this verse? Arab Shabbat, message E260. Genesis 8, Bereshit 8, verse 1, 2, 3. God remembered Noah, every living thing, and all the livestock with him in the ark. So Elohim caused the wind to pass over the earth, and the water began to go down. Also the fountains of the deep and the windows of the sky were stopped. The rain from the, the sky was restrained. <clears throat> and the water came back from completely covering the earth. It was after 150 days that the water went down. Amen? So the water completely covered the earth. It didn't say it was 90% covering because why did the water cover the earth? Because it was sin. Why is the woman a servant to her husband because there's sin in the world. She wants the covering of the man. In Genesis, what else did the Lord say? You're, you're, to the woman, your husband will be over you. He will be a full covering over you. A man who fears God is a full covering over his home, over his wife, over his children, over the things, over protection. Okay, so if the enemy comes, he will have God on his side. He will be able to protect his family. But if you don't understand the, the concept of a covering, then you're going to be in disobedience. And then when the enemies come, you're going to have one foot out, or your head out, or a hand out, and that's going to be taken. And once they got part of you, they're going to have all of you. Go to Exodus 10 now. Shemot 10 Verse 1 through 4. Uh, 1 through 5, I'm sorry. 1 through 5. Shemot 10, verse 1 through 5. We're now going to be going with covering and submission. Covering and submission. Jehovah said to Moshe, Go to Pharaoh, for I have made him and his servants hard-hearted, so that I can demonstrate these signs of mine. So that you can tell your son and grandson about what I did to Egypt and about my signs that I demonstrated among them. And so that you will all know that I am Yehovah. Moshe and Aaron went to the Pharaoh and said to him, Here is what Yehovah, Elohim of the Hebrews says, How much longer will you refuse to submit to me? Let my people go so that they can worship me. Otherwise, if you refuse... To let my people go tomorrow, I bring locusts into your territory, and one won't be able to see the ground so completely will the locusts cover it. They will eat everything, anything, sorry, anything you still have that escaped the hail, including every tree you have grown in the field. Amen? So let's look at verse 5. That's going to be the first part of this before we go to submission. 
he said that the locusts are going to cover the ground completely. Now, if the Lord says completely, that meant completely. As he covered the whole world with water, he's now covering all of Egypt with locusts. He's now covering all of Egypt with locusts. They were going to eat up every green thing. Anything that could be eaten, these locusts were going to eat up. So now you understand, we're understanding what a covering is. A covering is something full. He unbinds her hair. He uncovers her hair. Once you understand the concept of covering, then you stop arguing with God. Because look at verse um, 3 and 4. 3 and 4. Moshe and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said to him, Here is what Jehovah Elohim of the Hebrews says. How much longer will you refuse to submit to me? Let my people go so that they can worship me. Otherwise, if you refuse to let my people go tomorrow, I will bring locusts into your territory. Amen? Pharaoh had refused submission. When a wife covers her hair, she is submitting herself to her husband's full authority. When we wear the talit, gentlemen, we are submitting ourselves to God's full commandments. Pharaoh refused to let the people go, so he was totally destroyed. He refused to submit to God and his will and his covering. So what happened to him? When you refuse to submit to God and his ways, you get cut off, you get destroyed, you lose children, okay? Because the refusal of submission of the covering of God's word in your life. So here, the husband is the overseer of the family. He thinks his wife is having an affair. He brings her to the Cohen. He unbinds her covering. Says, you're no longer under your covering. I'm going to put you back under God's covering. And God's going to see if you were an adulteress or not. You see? Once you understand the scriptures in a Hebrew understanding, because the Bible is a Jewish book. It's part of our lives. You don't have to explain these things a lot of times to uh, even Talmudic Jews. A lot of times you don't have to explain these things because they grow up in it. They grow up in a lot of other silly stuff, but the basic understanding is, well, well that's what it says. That's what we do because that's, it's an implied understanding because they've read it. But you try to tell the Gentiles who are under the same law, but they're coming out of pagan. I can't do that. Okay. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Pharaoh, yeah, that's cool. You don't want to submit to God? He's going to cover the ground with locusts now. Fully cover. Not, not just a little, no, no, not a couple little, like, hi, I'm a locust. He's going to cover them, and they're going to, um, you know, never see a locust. See? It's like, well, looks like a bunch of guys getting out of work at five, and they haven't eaten all day. Okay? So here, refusal to submit to the word of God caused everything that you could possibly eat get eaten. Now let's go on to the next one. Exodus 14. Exodus 14. Shemot 14. Are you learning something here tonight? Are you glad you finally made it? Okay, glad that we're keeping this 11 o'clock Erev Shabbat teaching going. I hope you're getting it over there for those that are with us that are online and those that have been with us for a while. I'm glad to see you. Uh, hopefully you're being blessed. We're just trying to bring the word of God. That's my job as a Jew, to bring the word of God to Jew and Gentile. I'm a zealot for the law and for my Messiah Yeshua who kept the law. Exodus 14, verse 25 to 28. And wait till you hear tomorrow's message. What the Lord showed me was so amazing. He caused the wheels of their chariots to break off so that they could move only with difficulty. The Egyptians said, Jehovah is fighting for Israel against the Egyptians. Let's get away from them. Jehovah said to Moshe, reach out your hand over the sea and the water will return to cover the Egyptians with their chariots and cavalry. 
When she reached out his hand over the sea, and by dawn the sea had returned to its former death, the Egyptians tried to flee, but Jehovah swept them into the sea. The water came back and covered all the chariots and cavalry of Pharaoh's army would follow them into the sea. Not even one of them was left. Amen. Look at verse 26. What did it say in 26? Jehovah said to Moshe, reach out your hand over the sea and the water will return and cover the Egyptians with their chariots and cavalry. Did he leave anybody alive? No. He fully covered them with the water. See, a covering means a complete covering. Complete covering is good, but in this case, because of disobedience, the covering was death. Noah in the ark, if he had just covered 99% or maybe 70%, you know, left the bangs out or something like that, okay? What would happen? What would happen? What I'm trying to show you is the concept of covering. What is so important about a biblical covering? It's because under the talit, under the talit, you want to stay fully covered. That's why the men wear the seat seal on each corner, the north, the south, the east, and the west. You want to stay fully covered under God's blessings. You want to stay 70%, then you're no percent. You're either 100% in or not in at all. So here, if we look at verse 28 again, the water came back and covered all the chariots and cavalry of Pharaoh's army who had followed them into the sea. Not even one of them was left. The water fully covered all of Pharaoh's army and destroyed them. And destroyed them. The covering. Understand the covering. You're what I'm trying to pass along to you in a Hebraic biblical understanding, and we're going to get to the Brit Hadashah in a minute, okay? What a covering is and why it's so important to be fully covered, not just partially covered. You can't be a part time believer, okay? So if there are people even coming to this congregation. If you're just covering your head, ladies, on Shabbat, don't cover it at all. Come with it hanging out, okay? If you're not doing it during the week, don't please me. Please, I want you to please the Father. I want you to please His Son, Yeshua, who believed in everything His Father said. I'm nothing. I'm just a dirt bag. Because we're all made from dust. We're all made from dust. I want you to believe in God. Especially when you hear tomorrow's message. The, God's, the Father's mind, I can't wait to have an opportunity in Hashemayim to talk with him. I just admire his ability so much. I'm in awe of his amazing character, his amazing thought process. And when he says to do something, why not do it? If blessings are going to come, what's the, what's the downside of not covering all the ark? Well, can that, how long can you tread water? Ha, ha, ha. Okay? You know, 99% of the ark was covered, dear father. Yeah? Well, you're now at the bottom of the ocean because I told you to cover the whole thing. But, uh, but, uh, no. And I told you to cover it inside and outside. But I covered 70% of it. I was tired. I didn't like the way it looked. Okay. 40 days and 40 nights of water. Covering is a protection. Let me say that again if you're writing notes. A covering is a protection. A covering is a protection. The water covered the Egyptians. They died because their leader refused to yield to God. Exodus 25 now. Exodus 25, verse 17 through 20. Let's take this concept of covering even a little further. Exodus 25, let's understand the concept of the covering. What is a biblical covering in the congregation? Why do you want the covering of the congregation if you were to go out and minister? Why do you want this? 
Exodus, Shemot 25, 17 to 20. You are to make the cover for the ark out of pure gold. It is to be three and three quarters feet long and two and a quarter feet high. You want to make the two caravan of gold, make them of hammered work for the two ends of the ark cover. Make the caravan on one end and one caravan for the other end. Make the caravan one other piece with the ark cover and its two ends. The caravan will have the wings spread out above and their wings cover the ark and their face toward each other and toward the ark cover. So I know sometimes reading this, amen, sometimes reading this you're like, huh? The concept for tonight's message, E260, e is how much of the ark was covered in gold? The whole thing. You want God's holiness, that's a holy object, and you're supposed to be a holy object. Be holy, for God is holy, says Peter, Kepha. You want the full covering of God surrounding you. You want gold surrounding you. You want God's hand surrounding you. You want the protection. You want the full covering of something special surrounding you. That's why he said on the four corners, north, south, east, and west, surround the men. That's why he said to the woman's hair, cover her whole hair. Surround her with your protection. God's things are fully covered. It's a protection. You're supposed to be something special. Covering. Exodus 33, verse 21 and 22. Exodus 33, verse 22 and 20, 21, 22, 21, 22. Shemot 33, verse 21 and 22. Isn't this fascinating? Quite fascinating. Once you understand what the covering is, you're like, this is just intense. Exodus 33, verse 21 and 22. Here he said, Is a place near me. Stand on the rock. When my glory passes by, I will put you inside the crevice in the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Amen? He covered Moshe fully with his hand until the glory passed by. He could only see his back. He took his hand away after the kabod, or kavod, whichever way you want to say it, Ashkenazi, Sephardic, it all depends which way you want to do I say kavod, okay, the kavod passed by, he was fully covered. You want God's hand fully around you, you want the protection of God's hand around you. When a wife has her hair fully covered, she is saying, I am surrounded by my husband. My husband is a God-fearing man. We got married under the talit. We believe in the laws, the full covering of God. The ark was covered in pitch all the way, not 100%. And now God says, I'm going to cover you fully with my hand to protect you. Now you understand the covering. The biblical covering is a full covering. Not 90%, not 70%, not 50%, not 80%, 100%. Because if it's not 100% covered, drip, drip, drip. Over 40 days and 40 nights, where would that water going to go? Well, we'll drink it. Well, what were you going to do with it? There was no sump pump in that ship. Okay, it wasn't a ship, it was a, it was a barge. It had no steering mechanism. God brought it where it wanted. It, you couldn't open the door. And what are you going to bring? How are you going to bring it up to that window to get the water out? It's going to be dripping, 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 dripping. Somebody shut the water off. Okay? Cover you with my hand. Under God's protection, there is a covering. Wow. Genesis 16, verse 8 and 9. Now we're looking at submission. You want to submit to the full covering. Submission. We're changing now the covering to submit fully. Submit fully. Genesis 16, verse 8 and 9. And, and said, Hagar, Sarai, slave girl, where have you come from and where are you going? She answered, I'm running away from my mistress, Sarai. The angel of Jehovah, who was Yeshua, said to her, go back to your mistress and submit to her authority. Amen? See, when you submit to the authority, the biblical authority that's over you, there will be a blessing. So she was running away. She didn't get a blessing. She went back. Okay, she went back. 
as what the, the angel of the Lord told her. We know that Yeshua, in other studies, we have fully proclaimed that and fully understood that. She went back, and then when, when uh, Abraham had to send her away, she went away with a blessing because she fully submitted to her authority. By a woman having her head covered, in Numbers 5.18, she's submitting fully to the authority that's over her in her husband. I can't do that. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a old woman. I'm going to go burn my bra. Yes, sir. I'm going to burn my bra. I am woman. Hear me? Raw. 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 No. Rare. <laughs> what you want is to have the authority of God in your life, and God has an order. What did we read in the vow? Man has a wife. The wife is under him. The wife says something that he doesn't like. He has the authority to remove that vow she made. She cannot do the rest. Okay? You want the full covering, the full submission. Exodus 10 now, Exodus 10. Exodus 10, verse 3. I hope you're learning something on this Erev Shabbat. And you stayed up and you traveled, even though you were late, but it was a good thing. Exodus 10, verse 3. Exodus 10, verse 3. Shemot 10, verse 3. We're talking about submission again, full submission. Moshe and Aaron went into Pharaoh and said to him, Here is what Jehovah and the Elohim of the Hebrew says. How much longer will you refuse to submit to me? Let my people go so that they can worship me. Amen? Had Pharaoh just submitted to God, everything would have been different for Egypt. But he refused submission. Submission gets you blessings. When you submit to God's authority, when I submit to God's authority by wearing this long silly beard that gets caught in your clips, okay, and hurts when you turn your head, then God says, I'll bless that. The pain, you understand my pain now. Okay? When you submit to God's authority, what is submission? Full covering. Full covering. When you follow God's laws fully, then you will be blessed. But when you don't follow God's word fully, then there is chastisement. Now, let's see if this concept travels all the way through to the Brit Hadashah. Turn to the book of Romans. Romans 8, let's see what my cousin Paul has to say about this. Romans 8, verse 7 and 8. Romans 8, verse 7 and 8. I think we got a couple more scriptures. Uh, yep, a couple more scriptures. A couple more scriptures. Romans 8, verse 7 and 8. About five, eight more minutes. I'm trying to get these in in one hour. I don't know if I'll be able to do that each week, but <laughs> we'll try. Romans 8, verse 7 and 8. For the mind controlled by the old nature is hostile to God. Because it does not submit itself to God's law, his Torah. Indeed, it cannot. Thus, those who identify with their own nature cannot please God. Amen? Okay, the world says you got to look pretty. The world says you got to look handsome. God wants you plain. He doesn't want you looked at. He wants your, his light to shine through you. But if you're, yes, you can look pleasant. You don't have to look like a mess and smelly and because then you're detracting from God. When your walk is not your talk, then you have not submitted yourself fully to God's Torah. Submission. So Rav Shaul is saying if you're controlled by the old nature, I, I got to look this certain way. I can't do it. Okay, that's cool. Then you're hostile to God because you have not come in full submission to his word. Okay, this goes all the way back to Noah. If, what if Noah were only covered 70% of the ark? Drip, no, it would have sank a lot quicker. What if he were to cover 99%? Drip, 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 drip. Okay, now what if the woman doesn't cover her hair fully? Drip, 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 drip. Okay, then you're, you're identifying with the old nature, and this, Rav Shaul is saying, does not please God, because your mind is controlled by the old life, you want your mind controlled by the new life because you're supposed to be a new creation. And who's the authority over your head? It is Yeshua himself. This is why you cover your head, even the, the unmarried women, in prayer. Because why? The angels fell in Genesis 6 in Nephilim. They're men from renown, men from old. 
Go to our study on it. If you don't want to believe it, there's a two-hour study on it. Okay? So please don't give me silly little emails. There's studies on the website. 1,500, no, I think we're up to 1,700 videos on the website. Okay? Ephesians. Let's see what else Paul wrote about submission. Ephesians 5. Now, this will come together with Numbers 5.18. We're going down to Ephesians 5, verse 22 to 24. Ephesians 5. Uh, uh, stiff upper lip, ladies, and stiff upper lip, gentlemen. Yes, sir. Pip, pip, and all that stuff. A pointed stick. Numbers 5, verse 22 to 24. 22 to 24. Numbers, uh, Ephesians 5, verse 22 to 24. Wives should submit to their husbands as they do to the Lord. Because the husband is the head of the wife. Just as the Messiah is the head of the Messianic community, it is himself the one who keeps the body safe. Just as the Messianic community submits to the Messiah, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. We're just talking about the covering right now. Don't worry if you wish to play chess. We can do that in about 10 minutes. Okay? We got the hecklers in the crowd. Don't worry. I have a shofar. Okay? What does it say in verse 22 and 24? Wives should submit to their husbands. They should submit to God's authority. He goes on, the husbands should submit to Messiah. Not a little bit. Fully. We're talking about people that want to live biblical lives. You want to put on a costume, put on a clown costume. Put on leather. You know, go all the way. You know, wear leopard skin, things like that. Be of the world. If you're going to be of the world, be real of the world. Come on, just like go all the way. Don't walk in the middle because then you get whacked on both sides. Walk on one side or the other. Okay? Submit fully. Let's see if this goes to somebody else in the Bridhadasha. Go to the book of James. James chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. Submission means full submission. Covering means full sub covering. The Ark of the Covenant was covered 100% in gold. The Ark of Noah's Ark was covered 100% in pitch and tar. Okay, now James 4, verse 7 and 8. James 4, verse 7 and 8. Therefore submit to God, moreover take a stand against the adversary, and he will flee from you. Come close to God, and he will come close to you. Clean your hands, sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded people. Amen? Submit to God. God's authority, God's ways of doing things. Okay? You want God's covering over your life? Submit to his authority. Submit to his word, then you'll be blessed because God has been, the Father has been, you know, existing forever. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he says. He tells his children what he wants. Be holy for he is holy. You submit fully, then you get blessings. You don't submit fully, Pharaoh, what happens? Your kingdom gets taken, your army gets taken, and you never come back from the dead. You're a third world nation, Egypt. Bend your knee to God and submit to his authority and then blessings will come. Finally, what is the biblical covering of the congregation? 1 Peter 5. Verse 5. This is the final scripture for Ere Shabbat message E260. The covering. Hopefully you've learned something about the covering tonight. 1 Peter 5, verse 5, Likewise, you who are less experienced, submit to leaders. Further, all of you should clothe yourself in humility towards one another because God opposes the arrogant, but to the humble he gives grace. Submit to the leadership that's been trained. You can't just read the Bible and think that you're going to know what you're, you're going to do because Nehemiah tried to do that and Ezra had to come and say, huh, Good effort, bad execution. There's a leadership training. Submit to those that have more experience. They have to line up everything with the Word of God. A full covering means that the rabbi wants to teach. He wants to show the children what it is to be under submission to God. Numbers 5.18 said what? The woman's hair was uncovered. 
it was fully covered because she was in full submission. The Ark of the Covenant was fully covered in gold. The man is fully covered in a talit. The Ark, Noah's Ark, was fully covered. So come into full submission to God's word and be blessed. I bid you an amen and an amen. amen, amen, amen. Shalom. This is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman. I would personally like to thank you for tuning in to The Remnant's Call each and every week. You can listen to the full message on our website, bethgoyim.org. If you have drawn closer to the King of Kings, learned more about Him today, we are blessed. If you are blessed by these messages, please consider a donation to our ministry. You can go to our website, bethgoyim.org. That's B E T H G O Y I M dot org. And click on the donate button. You do not have to have a PayPal account to donate. All you need is a debit card. Once again, thank you very much for listening to The Remnants Call. If you have not taken your first steps to be born again, just ask God's help. Remember, it's His loving grace that has come to find you. No one is worthy or able to reach God, but God can reach us, and He's reaching out to you now. Just open your heart and let Him in. His arms are open, and the blessing of salvation and eternal life are waiting for you. Don't let it wait any longer. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you and give you his shalom. Shalom. My name is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman, and I invite you to come to visit our congregation. If you are in the tri-state area, come out and visit with us on Shabbat. We are a congregation of Jews and Gentiles, living as one in the Messiah Yeshua. BGMC is a place of true worship. The focus never wanders from the Hebraic roots of our faith. Beth Goyim is rooted in the Word of God from Bereshit through to the book of Revelation. Messiah's strong words against man-made tradition are carefully recorded in Matthew 7. That is the reason we only follow the straight-up instructions found in Scripture. Truly, the way, the truth, and the life. If you're looking for a deeper walk with Adonai, come out for our Tuesday evening Bible study called Messianic Torah Time. Come, spend the day with us on any Shabbat. We start at 11 a.m. with the sound of the ancient Hebrew shofar. Next, we offer our King praise and worship in English, Hebrew, and Spanish. After worship, we review the headlines in the previous week's news from around the globe, especially news from the Holy Land, Israel. We don't just list the news headlines as current events, but we comb through the scriptures searching for clues to understand what they mean and then to help pinpoint prophetically our current position on Adonai's clock. After digesting all that modern information, we leave the world behind as we journey with our Adonai deep into his eternal word, not with just one or two scriptures, but usually seven or more scriptures. The spiritual nourishment and the richness of his kingdom become accessible to the ones who share this special time and seek them out. The day does not end there. Because Shabbat is so special to him, there is always so much more that our king desires to share. So instead of separating and leaving, we stay together as a family for potluck lunch and an afternoon study of our king's word. We close this Shabbat together with a reading of the New Week's parasha. That's the Torah portion. 
even after those blessings, many of us just can't get enough. So the members bring prepared homemade foods to share while we all enjoy an uplifting movie together. If all that information is not quite enough, you can check out our website where you will find over 200 video teachings and Biblical Holy Day studies. Under Messianic Torah Time, the Hebrew Roots button, you'll discover free studies on many, many different topics, including PowerPoint slide presentations. If Beth Goyim sounds like a place you'd love to visit, but you live outside the Tri-State area, there is still a way to connect with us. We stream live on the internet on Tuesday, Thursday, and Shabbat. The website is www.bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M.org. Our phone number is 973-338-7800 or 978-2-YESHUA. That's 978, the number 2, YESHUA. Shalom.